guys, welcome to the channel. So as promised, we're back doing the second colour. Yeah. Yep. So uh, we are painting this classic vintage, well, it's not classic, it's a vintage car, uh, vintage Austin A30 from 1956. So it's nearly 70 years old. Uh, it was desperate for a paint, a coat of paint, wasn't it, Ian? Yeah. Um, and I have to say, being that I'm a complete amateur, never done this before. Never, have you painted no. a car before? No. Um, pair of wallies basically yeah. uh it's come out really quite well we're really quite pleased with this now i'm going to show you a couple of the experiments that we've done this morning um i have had a good friend of mine matt here and we've been trying to figure out what the best next step is for the car we were toying with the idea of trying to flat the coat down with 1500 grit to 2000 mm. grit and as you'll see by by this which i'll show you now uh the experiment so here we go we did manage to get quite a nice shine on that um, it's a shame that it's not going to work out because as you can see, you know, we came, we, we did experiment hard, but we came up with all kinds of issues. Now I have since been told by the guy at the paint shop that apparently the synthetic enamels, you know, they, they are hard work in terms of the flatten down. Now you guys are the experts. We've been having some fantastic comments in. I, I don't know about that. What do you guys think? Have you managed to successfully flatten down coats mm. before? Um, I, I thought you could do it with any paint and uh, by the looks of it, you can. Uh, but yeah, we seem to be getting some very weird smudging going on and it's got two coats of paint on there. So I can't, oh, yeah. yeah, I can't see that being a problem. Uh, we were toying with the idea of putting yet more paint on it to, to do it. But in the end, um, based on what the guy at the paint shop has said and our experiments here, we've decided to just simply be happy with what we've got here. I have to say that is 10 times better than yes. what it was originally. Yeah. So let, I'll give you an idea of how the paint looked originally. There you go. That's what I was dealing with. Yeah. So we've gone from something that looks like this to something that looks like this. Um, not perfect. But that wasn't the idea of it. Uh, this is a lifetime project for me. So I've got my whole, time, my whole life to, to get this, this looking good. And I can always do section at a time if it, if it really needs to. But what do you think, Ian? It's, it it looks, looks nice, I think. Um, so I will repaint the bonnet because we've been playing around with it as an experiment. But I think today's game is to get all of this paper off. Because now we're going to be um, we're going to be pro well going to do another primer on the roof, and we're also going to be dealing in with the uh, the masking tape bleed through problem. So let yeah. me just take you around here and show you what I mean by that. So let's just uh, take this off. I put this on this morning, but basically just to show you, this morning we had taken off the masking tape. Now, as you can see here, this is what we're talking about. Now, I was spraying downwards when this happened. Um, and it still managed to get underneath or bleed through the masking tape. So although I've had a lot of suggestions from you guys commenting on how to do this, which has been very, very helpful, I'm going to kind of go with kind of the simple, simple suggestions first and then get more complex as we go in. I think our first attack, um, in, fact, in fact, I think it was one of the first suggestions that came in, is to use frog tape because it's quite thick. Whether that'll make a difference or not, we'll, we'll find out. Now, I quite liked Matt's idea. Matt, th I, I, must, I must say, I can see his plan working really quite nicely. So we need to prime this anyway. I need to put like two coats of primer on the roof, because as you can see, these are going to show through. Yeah. Now here, what I'm going to do is use the same color here and run a line just along the edge there. Now, the idea being that once we have that edge sealed by this paint that will be the color that bleeds through to this color mm. yeah and then we put two coats of primer over the top and our other coats and hopefully that means nothing will bleed through to mm. that that's a theory you'd yeah. what do you think do you like that plan yep now i suspect some people will disagree but the proof will be in the uh, <laughs> in the evidence there yeah definitely so anyway let's get all this off Ian. i think yep. And a cup of tea, yep. and uh, we'll get we'll get cracking. Crack on, <laughs> crack on.
little while ago, I don't know if you remember, um, Ian's just touched on a good point. I made a comment about uh, using this card stuff, the paper, the paper rather than this one. Now, I don't know if the camera can catch this. If you sort of risk sprinkle it about, it's not, it's not really picking it up on the cameras. But if we look down here, can you see how it's snowing like flakes on the floor of that? Yeah? Look at that. So that's from this um, sticky roll stuff. So you can buy it in the DIY stores. Uh, I had some here earlier. Where is it? This stuff. Now, it's good, isn't it, Ian? No. But that is the only trouble. It doesn't absorb any of the paint. And, yeah, that, this ends up happening. Now, if you'd imagine you were spraying and that was to get laid, you end up with, like, little flecks. There you go. In your paint. And that's how you get your dust nibs and you know, little specs that you don't want. So, yeah, heads up, in case you are following me on this, you know, get the um, the paper card stuff. It was fairly inexpensive, that. I think it was like a tenner. And, there, yeah, you get it on the roll like that. Much better. Right. Do you want to grab us a cup of coffee yeah. then, Ian, and help yourself to one? And uh, I will continue getting all this off. So, for now, Ian, you are safe. Because we only got three people that said <laughs> that you needed to uh, walk the plank because of not wearing latex gloves whilst uh, using a tacking cloth. Guys, I'm disappointed. I, I really hoped you'd like to dunk this guy. <laughs> I did. I had to do it in December. <laughs> oh, well, there's a few weeks to go. I'm going to put a deadline on it. Six weeks. Six weeks. Six okay. weeks, because we'll have the boat out in six weeks. Yeah, come on, guys. Make him walk the plank. Even if he doesn't deserve it, I think it'd be funny. <laughs> right then. Um, yeah, so I've just discovered something. It's hard to do. <laughs> yes, to get that. Per now, I, I, what I've tried to do is get that one continuous line rather than breaks because I don't want anything staggered. I think I've got pretty much there. What do you think, Ian? Yeah, That's all right, isn't it? Yeah, don't panic, guys. Uh, Chris has been out and brought some, uh, some primer for the top. We're going to put a couple more coats of primer on the top, then sand it back again. More sanding. More <laughs> um, and then we will be spraying this second colour into that. So, yeah, we might be a couple of weekends away from that. We'll try and get the primer bit done. You never know, Mike. It might drive by tomorrow. Well, yeah. But I'm doing a car boot sale tomorrow. So, yeah, I don't know if I'll have time for that, but we'll see. Right. Um, Ian, are you right to film? Yeah, yeah. yeah. What kind of music do you put to this? Oh, <laughs> well, we'll see how long we can go without music first. <laughs> there you go. You've got my face in it. So all I've had this morning is Ian keep touching the car and going how lovely it is. So that's good news. Ian likes the car, don't you? Impressed? Yeah, I must admit I'm impressed that he's nodding. That now the trouble is he's going around a corner. So I think I will do this in bits. I think. Let's uh, start here. That's what. Well, basically, I'm just copying what Matt was doing this morning. Very, very knowledgeable man is our map. A bit like that. Boring. That's all right, isn't it? Yeah. So I have yet again had another chat with Matt uh, about this bonnet that we were talking about earlier. Very irritatingly, Ian. Yeah. I think we might be changing our mind again. Yeah. Um, now, 
<laughs> to be honest, last time I threw out a comment to you guys saying, look, please, please can you give me some advice? Um, I have no doubt that some of you out there know exactly the answer to this. This is um, enam a, a synthetic enamel, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, paint. Can that be flattened down? Yeah. And we'll see what the internet says. <laughs> because basically, I've got enough paint to paint this a few more times. Um, I would really like it to look like this, because Ian, that looks insane, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. uh, I don't know if the camera really shows that, but I think that person looks really, really good. So, you know, at the cost of obviously spraying the rest of the car a couple of times again and getting this result, I think it would be very much worth it, don't you? Oh, yeah. Definitely. So, yeah. Look, guys, um, please, can, please, can you tell me what you think? Because I don't really know. I'm not an expert in paint. I'm not an expert in any of this. But, yeah, um, it, there's some evidence here that you can flatten down coach paint. So, yeah, um, tell me what you think. Because what we've got here is like a little dull patch. And I think what we've potentially done is sanded back so far that it's gone back to the base coat. Um, so, obviously, a couple more cut coats of paint on there. That might not happen. And we can end up with a result like this, possibly. Uh, so tell me what you think. I'm ranting in. Make me stop. stop. Right. <laughs> How are you getting on? So, yeah, this is where we're at with the car. That's looking pretty good, Ian. Um, these bits here, although they are important, you know, uh, we're not that overly bothered with if the line's not absolutely perfect because, of course, we've got a draft excluder that's going to go over the top there. Um, now, what we're going to need to do is uh, a couple of coats of primer on the roof. Uh, the inside's not so bad. There's got quite a lot of primer in there. Mm. But yeah, the roof is a little lacking, isn't it? Oh. So I think today's task, and if we can get a couple of coats of that on there, yeah. if I get some time tomorrow, I might be able to sand it back and possibly have a look at the next coat. The only trouble is, Ian, I'm running out of time. I've literally got so much on at the moment. So it might be into next weekend, but we'll see how we go. We up to down here. So now I don't know whether this is right or wrong, but I do love the idea of this. Uh, so what we've done is we've used fog tape, which is one of the comments that we had. Um, apparently this is one of the only masking tapes with uh, non-bleed technology on it, allegedly. I bet they all say that. <laughs> but um, yeah, I fear that may even not be enough. So what I've gone about doing is just using a little bit of the same colour that we used um, on the obviously the, uh, the coat at the bottom of the car. And I'm just running a little line of that along because obviously we're going to be doing a couple of primer coats on the top. And if it's sealed by the correct colour, it will be the correct colour that bleeds through to the base, if that makes sense. Did that make sense, Ian? Yeah. Um, then, of course, you won't see that because then we're going to spray over the top of that again. So obviously I will need to let this dry for the primer coats go on but at least it'll be the right color that's gone through. Uh, hopefully that'll be enough. If not, we'll, uh, we'll be trying some of the other comments that have come in my way, but I think that should combat that quite well, Ian, don't you think? Yeah. How are you getting on? Right, yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah, so this is a little bit funny here, so I'm gonna need space to get into the car. So we'll basically need to make sure any overspray area is well and truly covered up. But I think, yeah, as you can see, we definitely, uh, not gone lightly, have we? Wow. <laughs> you remember, you've got to spray. Up. Yeah, you know, we've got to be really careful that nothing comes out and gets the rest of the car. So, yeah, we're going to be painting in here. I don't think this needs any more primer inside because we've got to put quite a lot in there, but the top, yeah. as you can see, has worn down quite a lot. Although, having said that, Ian, we could paint a couple more. Well, we could paint another coat onto that bonnet, yeah. couldn't we? But as part of our experiment, because, of course, then next week, then I can uh, have a go at, at, um, at uh, wet sanding it back to see if we can get that shine out of it. Yeah, we'll do that. So, yeah, today we're going to finish that line. Tomorrow I'll paint a primer onto the top and potentially inside. Uh, I think this afternoon, because I'll have some spare time, I'm going to repaint the, the, uh, the hood again. Bit of a strange episode, this one, Ian. It's one kind of all over the place, isn't it? Oh, well. Oh, well. We're down the rabbit hole now, guys. Uh, I have no clue what I'm doing. That's why I really appreciate your comments in. So what's next? Oh, I've got to finish this. Yeah. Yeah.
where we're at at the moment. Um, we've just arrived back. It's Sunday. Um, we've just frozen to death doing a uh, car boot sale, haven't we? It was absolutely Baltic. <laughs> but we're back in the garage, nice and warm. So the plan is... Um, we well, we resprayed this yesterday. We didn't bother showing you just because I'm sure I'm sh you're sure you're sick of seeing me spray this color. Um, with the plan being that we're gonna rub it back again and then do a couple more coats on top to then try and flatten it back. Although it looks really shiny, there's quite a lot of orange peel on here. And as we were talking about, we've changed the plan a little bit because I was so impressed by that shine that we were getting when we flat, flat that coat down. I think it is potentially possible. So we're gonna go with putting a couple of more coats on here as an experiment first. If I can get that whole thing to shine like that, yeah. although it would be a lot of hard work to paint the whole car again a couple more times, I think it would definitely be worth it. But for now, we are gonna paint the top here. Now, uh, originally, I know I said this is the start of the second color, it kind of is, uh, but we've decided to put another couple of uh, primer coats on the top because i think mm. that'll be a good idea because we've got some green patches coming through and i just think we'll get some dark spots if we're not careful uh so ian has been very busy <laughs> uh, her ladyship is very much ready wow what a job ian look at he's been very far alert look at that <laughs> you've we'll run out of masking tape here and no, it's his fault <laughs> got plenty of masking tape um, so yeah, this was somebody's advice was to get some frog tape. I've been round with the same colour with uh, as, as this, so that it, if it bleeds through, it will be the right colour, um, as I said last time. But yeah, I think we're pretty much ready to go. We, we need to get it rubbed down a little bit. Uh, tacking cloth, we're not going to bother showing you all that again, because yeah. I'm sure you're sick of tacking cloths by now. But yeah, we're going to degrease it, tacking cloth it up, and then get this thing to, covered with primer. And hopefully, after two or three coats, we'll be ready for the second colour. Yep. Cut. Pretty sure we're pretty much ready to go now, aren't we? Yeah. Um, so the whole car has been rubbed down, well, the parts that we're painting anyway, have been rubbed down with anti seal and we've used, uh, where's the tacking cloth? Always like to show the tacking cloth just in case anybody is painting out there based on what we're doing. Uh, I think this is probably a very vital part of the, uh, the process, the tack cloth, an absolute essential for getting rid of all those particles and dust off the car. So yeah, we are going to paint the top and inside again. I think it's not going to hurt to put an extra coat of primer in there, do you think, Ian? No, no. Uh, another one in there, and then um, next weekend, we're going to rub the whole thing down again, and then uh, we will be into the second color, which I know which is what I promised this week, but didn't realize that there were so many spots like this showing through, and I think it would probably make all, 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 the, uh, all the sense to get this painted over whilst these uh, lines that I've done here as well are on there. Do you reckon, Ian? Yeah. Because that will hide that quite nicely. Yeah. So let me just show you the paint that we use. It's not Paint Man, because I've been using Paint Man. However, I'm fairly suspicious, because that looks almost identical. It's just HMG. So um, based on the recommendation that someone commented in, saying maybe it's not a good idea to warm up primers, because it could potentially clump, uh, I'm tempted to accept the advice around me yep. that's probably a good shout but, um, but yeah inside there although that's red it is actually nice and clean inside that's going to come out hopefully a nice light gray so ian if you would kindly film me sir uh mask on and let's get some paint onto it right so uh actually i'm miles away i've not got the microphone on so i better come a bit closer <laughs> come closer come closer so uh we're back to using the very much underpowered compressor again um, uh, it's what we're dealing it's what I've got in it so uh, then maybe next time we'll have a better compressor so we decided last time we cranked it down to 40 psi um, I think it was a little bit weak and I think yeah really I think we need as much pressure as we can get so it's been cranked up this time um, I think the only thing we might do is do a few passes and give it a couple of seconds to recharge up and then do it again but it is it really is too small for this I think if you were going to do a really really nice proper job you'd be better off going for a much more powerful one and there's been so many comments about which which are the right ones to get in the comment section i don't actually know because i've not tried any of them out but on, on the team the to buy list ian i think oh yes do you not think i skimped on this one didn't i anyway i'll shut up ranting let's pay you.
in here and say this has been a bit of a weird one, Ian. Yep. <laughs> I don't really know what to call this episode either. This is <laughs> all over the place paint job. Um, so yeah, well I've just uh, sprayed the uh, primer coat onto the top, and we've uh, given it another coat inside as well. Um, not the most exciting thing in the world because, as I said, I, I did want to get to the second colour today, but. Um, I think it was definitely worthwhile putting this on. Um, I'm probably even going to do, come down in the week, and possibly do a couple more coats on top of there as well, Ian. Yeah. Just, yeah. I don't think it's going to hurt, and then that way I can rub it, rub it down yeah. again and make it sure it's absolutely uh, perfect. And then uh, we can get onto the second coat of the, sorry, not second coat, the second colour yeah. next week, um, which will be quite exciting. I do apologise for a bit of delay on that, but we wanted to just give you guys a progress update of what's... Um, you know what what's gone on i must admit we are a bit confused about the finish aren't we yeah because there's a choice isn't there yeah we can leave it like this which doesn't look too bad but it's quite as you can see yeah i'm sure the camera shows it like that you get quite a lot of orange pill some people like that and I, not being funny Ian, i could live with that mm. but i think what happened when matt came round and, and he showed us the finish that was that could be, be. Um, i'm afraid chris has got excited because it looked really really cool sure. so yeah um I'm going to leave this in the hands of our commenters because I have no doubt that there's going to be some real experts out there. Um, do you think I can uh, flat down uh, synthetic enamel paint? It is synthetic enamel, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, like I said, you must be able to to a point because we've managed to. Yeah. But yeah, for some reason, the guy at the paint shop is telling me otherwise. So uh, let's see what you guys think. So anyway, that's it for now. Little progress update. I didn't want to leave you guys out this week. I know it's only a little bit of primer, but nothing to get excited about. But next week, that means we can get on and get the second cut color on there. And hopefully, when we take this off, we won't have any bleeding through marks. Now, I'm aware that a lot of you have recommended doing it in so many other ways. Um, that I'm just going with the first one that came up and frog tape was worth a shout Ian. Yep. It did say it has anti-bleed technology on it, so fingers crossed. Uh, we won't actually know this until we put the next coats on, and it's a real shame that we're thinking about repainting the whole car two or three times to get that flat coat, because obviously we took all the masking tape off. But not to worry, at least we'll find out if the, um, the bleeding through happened. And if we need to paint the car, Ian, again, okay. you know, so be it. So be it. Um, you know, can't rush these things, can you? I know I said this wasn't going to be a concourse finished car, uh, but not being funny, we could quite easily paint the car a few oh. more times, couldn't yeah. we? You yeah. know, just just a bit of love and love and care, and that's why I'm doing this. You know, I'm not trying to be a complete barbarian with the job. Uh, I, I want it to look fairly nice. <laughs> so yeah, uh, we'll see you next time. I think that's it for now. Yeah. Am I just ranting now, Ian? No, that's it. I think it's quite important we go and. Uh, have a beer now because I have been out in the field all morning freezing because we did a car boot sale and it was absolutely freezing oh, wasn't it yeah. yeah I'm a chilly Chris today hopefully I don't come that down with pneumonia or nothing <laughs> right anyway let's uh, give everybody a wave there you go <laughs> that's it from us um, if you did enjoy that please give us a like and if you're not yet with us with our, our army of 250 subscribers right. at the moment Ian that's awesome thank you yep. guys uh, please subscribe and uh, we are still working on the notification bell can you guys let me know if your notification bells are working because I did play around with it and some people are still saying that it's not working but yeah hopefully that's all it all in place for you now and uh, yeah bye-bye bye. yeah that's, that's that's a wrap